Let's do it. All right, guys. So uh, that was the end of my speech. We had a quick break. Uh, you guys get warmed up, out up here. He warmed got warmed up, up by warmed you guys. Up. Fluff. The fluff. Yeah. I fluff just, myself. Just like <laughs> fluff. The fluff. Great. Um, so Top is a good guy, a great friend. I uh, the second the second year he's come out. I invited him the second time out. He came out first time in 08. He did a great job last year. I think as you guys have seen thus far, he's a really great speaker. This guy thinks I'm his feet like crazy. Awesome, awesome guy. He has great content. He's from the redmole.com. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just promoting him like relentlessly now. So Dude, he, do, you have. do a great job, man. I, I know you will. I appreciate you coming out every year. I hope to see you next year, too. So yeah. let's rock the house. Oh, what is it? What is it? Uh? What is it? Uh? Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh, I don't get the mic. I, dude, I love the mic. I love the mic. It's like a big... It's like a big dick. I, I know why Anthony wants to hold on to it. Okay, so anyway, guys, this is what's happening. There's, uh, there's some really cool stuff. We have a long, long weekend, right? And all these people are going to be speaking. So, like I said, I want to get the momentum going. So, number one, I want to do a little bit of an exercise with you guys. And uh, uh, we'll start with you, my man. Can you tear a page out of that book? I want to start an exercise, and we're going to do a fun little trick. What's going to happen is on that on that piece of paper, we're going to write down, uh, and this is going to come up later and all this fun stuff. I want you to write down your name, your we'll phone number. Like, yeah, yeah. How do you number close a group of guys, huh? <laughs> Stand on stage. Stand on stage and say you know about women. Uh, no, write your name, your phone number, and your email address, and we're gonna we're gonna work all this other stuff out. Now, in the other in the other uh, self, whatever. Uh, how do you say it? Self promoting vanity, uh, self-worship, look at yourself in the mirror and masturbate type thing. I want to do a quick little video because I want everybody to know how cool the under-21 convention is. So I actually want you guys to, oh, the pulse. Hey, do you, I, I, uh, I know this is a side note and I'm on stage right now, but I want the photographs of me to be good. I have uh, some extra lenses if you want to use them that are Canons. So they're right up here if you want. L series, L series. Oh, he doesn't seem to be reacting. No, but anyway, guys, so I want to actually do a little video because I've been recording on the road and saying, like, hey, yeah, look, I'm at this rest stop, and this gay guy hit me up. That's how much sex he had. Um, so, uh, so what I want to see, this is actually going to be a little, little secret thing. In fact, I'm going to write. I'm going to do a secret here. This is going to come up a little bit later. I was planning to do it on the microphone. But I want to say, I want, to, I want you guys to make some noise. You guys look like you all just fucking woke up and had like way too much valerian root. Are we ready? Are we ready? Under 21 convention, 2009. Make uh, it happen. The 21 convention. The, the. Fucking cocksucker. <laughs> Seriously. All right. So here we are, under 21. The, the under 21 convention. Because the real web, web, website is theredmole.com. I'm going <laughs> to... But here are these guys here, and so we're speaking here, we're having a good time. It's Thursday, and, uh, and it's going to be amazing. And, and here's, here's a little, little secret. You see what that says? All right. Email me. <laughs> okay. So that all being said, you guys are just like, what the fuck just happened? And pass that piece of paper around, because once it comes back, we're going to do an exercise with it. Um, <clears throat> but this is what I wanted to talk about. Look, there's a, there's a lot of stuff. Um, the, this community is, uh, if you guys don't know me, you can visit my website and write it down and look at it and watch the videos and listen to some audio, get on my email list, all that fun, fun, nice stuff that everybody says. But this community has influenced me massively. And my whole purpose in it is always to give back. And that I think if you want anything to influence anything in your life, if you want your life to be, to be you know, moved or you want great things to happen, you have to put effort into it, right? You have to you have to keep momentum going, and you have to you have to work at it, right? I I remember uh, there were these religious sermons that we we used to I used to be in, in theater, and uh, <laughs> which is an, another some some amazing stories come out of that. But I used to be in theater, right? And so they would do these preacher monologues, and the preacher monologues were like, "You gotta work, you gotta you gotta, you gotta take that sinew and that filthy skin of sin, and and, and you gotta shape it into something good." But that's true, and that's why we're all here, right? And you know, it's a funny thing because last year when I spoke here, I wanted to speak about some things like expectations, motives, per perceptions, and things like that. It was actually a big changing point in my life. There was a lot of stuff happening for me. There was a lot of pressure on me. There was a lot of like, <clears throat> a, a, a lot of things influencing me to change. Because one of the things is, is when we change, 
This is funny, I told, I told a famous Pua this, and now he says it all the time, but he doesn't get the last part. When we have a moment of change, we change through desperation, not inspiration. But, here's the part that he left out, what ki keeps us going, what makes us be able to actually progress and fulfill and live the lives we wanted to. You know, when you sign up for the Under 21 Convention, when you bought whatever product, what you expected out of that, you know, is inspiration, which keeps that going. We need a breaking point. You know, it's funny because actually in, in the actual, like, pickup, you know, original template, the M3 model and all that stuff, and, you know, maybe Mystery or Matador will be here to actually break it down and tell you the truth. Of, of what uh, what it actually is, and I'm just I could just be talking out of my ass, but there's that A2 point when somebody decides, they decide, they decide that they like you, they decide they're going to give you value or whatever. They're deciding something. That's very important. So you guys have all made that decision, right? And it's our job, it's our job as instructors to give that back to you. If we don't, then we're failing. You know, if we don't, if we're only up here to to give you whatever, uh, you know, two cents sales pitch or whatever, buy our shit, then fuck, man, that sucks. And this is an interesting thing. My, my friend Milo, Savage knows him, uh, he's, he's an awesome guy, he's a fucking genius. In fact, uh, he probably doesn't want me announcing on video, which is going to be plastered all over the internet. Some of the best guys, everybody always talks about Dallas. Dallas was good, or, or maybe that might be past already. This thing is so volatile, it's like a fucking, you know, Beef or a cum sock or something. People just throw it away, you know? But uh, they don't treasure it like me. I have like five that can fucking walk on their own. But uh, <coughs> I have names for them too. Change them into fetal finger puppets and shit. Oh, I have arms growing. No, you don't. That's mold. Um, so, so anyway. <laughs> so, no, but, but check it out. So, uh, Milo and, and Jason, who's Jason's actually speaking on Sunday. You guys got to come to it because I saw him speak like two or three weeks ago. It was literally one of the best speeches I've ever seen. I talk a lot about sex, but this guy was like, shit, dude, I was, I was fucking, my dick was taking notes. It was so good. But uh, I almost grew a pussy. No, but anyway, um, it, it was really an amazing speech. So a lot of you guys, like, that's, that's a big deal. And uh, that's, that's a big thing to look at in terms of, like, certain motives within the community is to check out his speech. But, uh, you know, my little plug to Milo is Jason and Milo are, are probably some of the best PUAs that I know. And they, uh, they live in Austin, and there's all sorts of other, you know, people in Austin, like Goat and whoever. I, I forget all their names. They're all hippies <laughs> down there. Anyway, <laughs> but, but, uh, but it, there's, so, so there's some great stuff. But like I was saying, our job, our roles for instructors are, are to teach you guys. You guys actually came here, you, you did this big action, you, you forked over like 20 grand to be at this thing. You're expecting like this big, like, like to see a lot, you know, from people. And I hate it, man. I fucking hate it when there's instructors coming up here and they're fucking like talking down to you and they're telling you like how things should be and they're saying like, well, if you just be me. If you just be me, you're going to get all this pussy. Well, fuck, man. Why doesn't somebody hire a fucking private investigator to follow them around to see how much pussy they get? Because it's, it does not happen, right? Uh, <laughs> and, and, and so think about that. You know, Think about what is it that you want? What is it that you want? And I just know this. I was, again, this is why I brought up Milo. Why, what made me think of this is he said when he bought, way back when, way back when, when David D's book was like you know, 15 bucks or something, right? When David D's book was, was really a low price, he bought it, you know, and that's how a lot of, he got in before the book, The Game, came out, right? But we've all been there on, online, and we're all looking around, we're surfing the net, we're going, hey, hey, uh, you know, what, what's going to be good? Oh, man, this is cheap, this says it's going to get me mad ass, this says it's going to do this, fuck, man, I'm going to have a social circle, I'm going to be able to walk in with 15 girls on my own. All right, uh, and, and then women are gonna, the science is women are going to throw themselves at me, okay? So they, you buy it. And I remember he told me this because I had the same feeling too, and I'm sure all of you guys had the same feeling as well. He's like, fuck, man, I, I feel bad about this. It's 15 bucks, right? That's, I've been at times when I don't have 15 bucks, but, you know, whatever. You know, 15 bucks I'm willing to go into, in, go into debt with. But, uh, but anyway, hey, if you want to jack off this lens, you can. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, you know, he's, I'm like, why did it feel bad? Because I can tell you why it felt bad for me, and we were talking about this. It felt bad because if that didn't work, dude, if that didn't work, I'd feel like such a fucking turd, such a, like, non-man, such a weak 
person for buying this thing, for admitting, you know, admitting that I like, you know, wasn't good at kind of something natural. I mean, it feels like shit when you go up and talk to a girl and she doesn't give you, you know, whatever feedback that you want, right? It makes you, it makes you feel bad. It makes you feel like less of a man. When you go and seek out stuff, you're like, shit, man. I'm buying this book. The first one's always the hardest. You know, then they fucking break you. It's like a pimp breaking a bitch. But the, the first purchase is always the hardest. And, and the thing was, is when I got that book, it did the little sales trick. It actually did, you know, if you look at David D's book, I think that was the first thing I bought. It, it ain't so bad. It actually makes more sense to me now than it did when I bought it. But, uh, uh, Evan, give me money. Give me money for this affiliate link. No, just like, um, <coughs> that's his name, Ebenezer. But, but anyway, uh, so the, the thing was is I didn't do it, you know, and I stayed in this mode where I kept buying stuff, right? Buy things here and there. I'd, I'd you know, read the game and go, man, if only I could, if only I could. But it made me feel bad. And the thing was is I, it, like, that's the way I learned how to, you know, game was from guys who would say, like, put me down and say, I needed to change. I needed to change. Who the fuck are they to tell me I need to change? I already know I need to change. I already know that I need to, you know, do, I'm ready. You know, I, I have dug the hole. I'm ready to jump in and fucking grow some roots. Tell me what to do. Give me some water. And it was like, fucking dig a deeper hole. You know, da 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 You don't know. You don't, you don't pull the ass that I do or all that stuff. And it's like, fuck, man. Why is it? That sound like Taylor Rain right there? A little bit, a little bit. Um, anyway, make it rain. Uh, no, so, so anyway. <laughs> so, but the thing is, is I, like, always saw this community in so many, so many awesome ways that never got taken advantage of. One, it's a community of guys. Now, there's girls involved, and that's great. I especially welcome feminists when they come and heckle me at Layer Talks in Austin <laughs> because they got fucking taken to goddamn school. Um, so, so uh, did they not? Or, uh, uh, yeah, it was good. Um, so anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but no, I, I actually think it's a good thing. I think it's a good influence. This is all about knowing more about women. In fact, one of the things that I have found so amazing about women in the community or even women that I've had relationships with, women that I'm, I'm friends with, whatever, is that they actually teach me more about game than, than anything, right? Um, it's just I needed that, I needed that foundation to be built. And I needed that big, solid block of foundation to be built. And there's a lot of great teachers who are here speaking, including myself, that can teach you that, can teach you that foundation, right? So, <clears throat> but here are some of the things that are missing, that are missing about the community. We all have these fake, gay-ass names. Now here's what happened. Basically, I took a boot camp and I signed up and I said, what movie do I like? There's one that's called Solo that wasn't in print in America, which I was like, oh, I don't know if anybody knows what that means. They, uh, they're going to fucking think I'm some sort of freak. If you guys have seen it, you should, you should watch it on a first date with a girl. How's that for social pressure? Um, <laughs> yeah, apparently, you guys haven't seen the movie. Uh, <laughs> so El Topo's the other one. So it's by this guy, Hodorowski, who's a Mexican director. So I put that in and then it stuck. But what was even better is like, man, we got this group of guys, there's a few girls, um, we call them attention seekers. <laughs> no, 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 there's a group of girls, and, uh, and the thing is, is we have these fake names. We have these fake names where we can go online and tell our stories, right? You know, we can tell our stories and kind of like bear our souls and be honest and say like, hey, look, I have this problem, I have this issue about not being able to, to meet women, I feel kind of like you know, not included with stuff, and, you know, guys, can you help? But you know what happens? We go online and we fucking lie our asses off. Oh, man, fucking, fucking, I went up and approached, like, I berated these girls. I approached these ten sets, and they fucking, like, you know, man, now I know why peacocking, like, works is because they paid attention to me, at the, or whatever, you know. But we, we take completely the wrong message, right? We take all the community out of what this was called. It was called the community, and that's what... 21convention.com. Did I get it right? Well, I don't see Anthony. But uh, see, see what he gets for not being here. <clears throat> but that's what it was for. It was, to, it was to show. It was to bring a community together. That's why I keep coming back here and speak here. And that's why, he, you know, after the hand job in the bathroom, after I speak, I might agree to 2010. But uh, we'll, we'll see. That hasn't happened yet. Um, <laughs> 
just that I'm setting my expectations levels up there. So, <coughs> so anyway, sorry, I've, I've, I've been sick. I got sick after after my my Austin speech because I stayed up all night doing bad stuff. Um, anyway, uh, the the thing is, is we take all that out of it. The, look, everybody here. Whenever I first started speaking, like this was the funny thing. I, I spoke at Layer Talks. I've been doing it for like over two years, right? And and people would be like, why do you speak to those assholes? None of them have money. So all the instructors would say, why do you fucking why do you talk to them? Like, geez, they're all weird. I'm like. I, I, dude, I'm pretty weird. Oh, shit, I fucking saved my urine in this bottle for a month. And <laughs> anyway, but yeah, you know that's normal. That's normal. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so let me tell you what compliance is when you can convince a girl to drink that. Um, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, but anyway. Uh, so I would be like, I'm pretty weird. I can actually like relate with them. I enjoyed it. I enjoy like going out and talking to people. And that was the other thing. I'm like, well, isn't this about kind of like you know meeting people and kind of bringing people up and like whatever, dude, whatever, you know? And so then they were like, dude, you're actually making money. Nobody makes money. And then it was kind of like, well, I guess Zan does it a little maybe, but you know, he's fucking, he's a fucking natural. Fuck Zan. Fuck, you know. So they'd be saying all sorts of stuff like that, and then they say, well. Brad P does it, and this was before we all knew Brad P was like really good, right? So they were all like, dude, he's full of shit. I read his posts. They're too much. Brad P is not full of shit. He's, he's, he's pretty awesome. Um, he's a great guy too, actually. He brings like a really good message with himself and all that stuff. Um, other than him being so freakishly tall and weird, uh, I guess. <laughs> uh, no, but anyway, so it's like, dude, you know, I, I loved it, right? And they were like, how, how are you? How are you making money? The, the best is, is I, I love, how are you, what, what is the quote? I won't bring up who said it, but maybe because my Steve is the most manipulative person, just takes advantage of the students. How is it that you manipulate them all and, and giving them money? I'm like, dude, I never like sell anything. I never tell, like I just say, hey, I want to stay in touch. I want to like, uh, you know, email you guys and all that shit. And, you know, talk like I just say that. They're like, but are you faking that you're their friend? And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just, I like really want to know, like, what's going on. I like, if anything, just to know what to teach more, you know, uh, or just to hear your experiences because I enjoy that. And they'd just be like, I don't get it. I don't get it. And then the best was they all tried to do it. They were like, I'm not here to sell you. I'm not a guru, but fucking respect me. Because <laughs> so, they'd like mimic these things that I would say, right? Which I like, dude, I'm not a guru. I'm a fucking, I'm like you guys there that has like maybe some more experience, but I bet you 10 to 1, you guys have a shitload of more experience than me in, in a lot of different areas, right? And that's actually one of the cool processes of like why I do these like customized stacks and all this shit. But that all being said, it was like, it was weird. I got to know the community. I got to know people in the community who were better than a lot of the instructors who were in the layers. I got to know like how different layers work. Like in Orlando, how many people are from here? Nobody? Yeah, so a couple guys. Like the top layer is a really good layer. You know, there's some there's some really good layers out there, you know, and there's some really poor layers too. There's some it just crosses the whole gamut. The one of the best layers I ever visited was in Indianapolis. There's like nineteen no, there were more than that. There were under thirty guys, right? Under 30 people in there, and they all kept together. These guys went skydiving together. These guys, like, you know, some of them got married and they'd go to their weddings and shit. And it wasn't shrouded in this secrecy and it wasn't shrouded in this bizarre, like, nature. So when somebody, like, asks you, like, hey man, what's your hobbies? You're like, um, um, I don't have any hobbies. Um. <laughs> you know, because they talk about it. You know, the, you're only as sick as your secrets. That's that's a pretty pretty interesting thing. Like the other the other week, I was in LA, or well, longer than the other week or whatever. I was in LA, right? And I met one of my former students who's kind of like surpassed. Now he's he's kind of done with the community. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. He actually he's done a lot for me. And actually, I look up to him in a lot of ways. There's a couple people that are like that. In fact, you know you know Justin, who's who was here last year, who I look up to in a lot of ways. It's my friends in the back who fucking left. Awesome. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, there's a lot of people who I really, really look up to. And this guy was telling me, he's like, look, man, the community is like bizarre. And I was telling him about a certain layer, which happens to be in uh, 
where he lived. You can do the math of where that is. And I'm like, yeah, dude, they suck. They like, I spoke there and they said, uh, we want 10% of the sales you made. And I said, you heard me speak for four hours for free on video that you guys can do whatever you want to the video. And now you're sitting there telling me that you're selling it and I'm supposed to give you 10% when I said I wasn't selling anything because I'm overbooked with everything. And, and I was like, dude, that's like totally fucked up. That's like the non-essence of a layer. If they told me that before, you know, maybe we could talk. But that was a weird thing. It was a, it was a really weird thing for me. I thought that was like kind of fucked up, right? I mean, I charge for what I charge, but dude, I give a lot of fucking free speeches. And if any of you guys see me throughout these four days and you get me on lockdown, well, maybe I shouldn't encourage that. I mean, I will talk to you. I will go, like, I love doing it. I love teaching. I love meeting people. I love talking to every one of you and hearing stories about your lives and saying, like, hey, look, man, why don't you take this different angle? Or, hey, I had a similar experience. Or, hey, I had a similar student or whatever. <clears throat> like, I truly love doing it, you know? That's fucking great to me. That's a beautiful thing. But, uh, but I was telling him, and he goes, dude, no wonder. Why, why, do you, why is that weird to you, Steve? He said, why is that weird? He's like, this is, uh, first off, the community was based on, you know, making shit up about you so that you could go talk to girls, so that you could get laid, and then have, like, relationships with them, even multiple relationships with stuff that wasn't you. That's fucking sociopathic, dude. And I've done it, you know? It sucks. It makes you feel like shit when you start fucking racking up massive lays, like 40 lays in a year based on that. It makes you feel like shit. Not all of them were based on that, but there was a lot of that included in every single one of those interactions. And I had to work to take that shit out. It, it's weird. It perpetuates a bizarre lifestyle. And then he said, but think about it. So all these guys who formed, formed whatever group it is to... Uh, all these guys who formed a group, you know, to basically be full of shit to get women, of course they're going to do something like that. You know, it makes sense. So that's an interesting thing. So let's get into the topics of our motives, our perspectives, and uh, what was the other one? Our expectations. What is it that you guys expect from the community? I had asked you, and uh, God damn, I already forgot what you said. You know, you wanted to see, you wanted to have some infield experience and all that sort of stuff. That's great. It's a good question. Look, I'm not saying this stuff is, is not, uh, you know, is not a, uh, a, a worthy thing. I want all you guys to go out there and connect with people, but connect with people in a way where it's using yourself and puts you on, a, on like autopilot almost, takes your strong points, which you already have, and have those start, start voicing, voicing themselves. So in field experience, that's great. What are some other expectations that people have? Nobody. Come on. When you signed up for this thing, what, what, did you want, what did you want to hear out of it? Let's see how big Matador's muscles are. All right. Because I do. Yeah, and so this guy actually, <laughs> this guy, he's from the Atlanta layer, so I know him from the Atlanta layer. Actually, I don't know the other eight guys. Have I, like, spoken or no? You guys all know that bitch, Justin, who? Oh, hey. Dude, come here. See, like Justin came to Vegas with us, and all my Vegas friends were like, dude, he's got like some sexual predator in him, man. <laughs> and he's an intense guy, right? Right? So, uh, my student, motherfucker, my student. Um, no, he's an intense guy. He's, he's, he, and like, that's a perfect example of using, using, that's a perfect example of a student who taught me more in the long run than what I taught him, although, he, I don't know, he may argue, but using his advantages to work for him. You know, Justin has a lot of stuff. He has a very rich life. He spent his whole life helping people. He spent his whole life, you know, making these huge transitions when he was 15, had, didn't have an ideal childhood. In fact, like if you look at all of his brothers and sisters, they all do not have good lives. And he is a, he's a guy who is, I mean, I don't want to say his profession, but it's a very stable profession and he's a very educated dude and overcame a lot of barriers. So what works for him is a mix of his craziness and his overzealousness and, uh, and, and a lot of those experiences that he had, which weren't so good, which what they say are DLVs. I was actually looking on uh, the Infield Insider like YouTube things, and they're like, this guy brought up that he didn't graduate from high school? What? What? He brought up that his girl, like, talking about me, right? To, what? To a girl, he brought up that his like, girlfriend was like, you know, kidnapped and shit and raped, and like, why would, why would he? Because, because when people meet me, I want them to meet me. 
And I want to define that situation right away. I'm, I'm going to get to you know, the tricks, the tactics, the right away, right now, go out and use this, <laughs> uh, ways to do that. But uh, before I do, you know, I, I, want to, uh, I want to explain a few of these things first. But that's what, that's what I found works best for students. How many of you guys, um, since we weren't so all hot on the interaction with the, the expectations thing, <laughs> how many of you guys uh, uh, actually feel, this is a common question that, that people ask me, you know, if I can just talk to a girl, if I can get, you know, in that zone where I'm like sitting down and comfortable with her, I'm fine. How many of you guys think that? Nobody. Jesus Christ. All right, the, the two passive, like, oh, they're fucking Chris. Do it with pride. <laughs> um, anyway, but, the, all right, so you guys, you guys didn't, didn't bite at that one. But this is a common thing. Everybody, would, when they'd hire me, they'd say, dude, it's the beginning. I can't, it's the beginning. I can't get them to, like, open up. But once they get talking to me, once I get talking, once I'm talking, I'm fine, right? I'm fine. And then later they'll come to me and say, dude, my comfort game sucks. My comfort game sucks. <laughs> how, do I, how, do I, how do I tell a story? How do I tell a story? Well, here's the key, right? All these theories and all these like, things, they're all right. Like Actually, one of, my, one of my good friends, Fuji, back there, is probably going to give like, a great speech. Let's hope. Pressure's on, buddy. <laughs> but that's telling a very technical way to do game. A very technical way to do game. That's how I learned. That's great. That's fucking awesome. But at the same time, dude, we're all guys that love. We're guys, for one. We're, we're guys who are like, dude, show me the techniques. I'm going to do it. I'm going to fucking do Nobody's going to tell me no. That time when I was five, and my dad told me to pick up the jar, and I picked it up, but it hurt, but I did it, and then put it on the table. Like, no, it's going to be like that. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it, right? Yeah, so, so we're like, I'm going to learn. I'm going to be the best. Fuck, man. All these other guys, they quit. I'm gonna, all right, so, so they go and they, they, we, we get it and we learn all these techniques, but then we get obsessed with them, and then we learn like another person's technique, and they're like, fuck, psych told me that, fuck, Adonis was shit, dude. <laughs> then I heard Matador talk, and I was, oh, fuck, man, Jesus Christ. Well, look, we want to keep it simple, right? We want to keep it simple because I know that you guys are going to have like a lot, a lot of influence, right? A lot of folks, a lot of folks coming at, at you this weekend, <coughs> coming at you, uh, Fuck, man. I just rode in this car with these guys that were like, oh, Steve said this. Oh, fuck. He's blowing, he said he's blowing kisses out of his ass at us. Oh. Anyway, but, uh, <laughs> um, so anyway, you're going to have a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff to take in. Let's keep it simple. So what are some things that you guys could do? One, we, we're all familiar with this idea of attraction, right? We're all familiar with this idea of comfort. We're all familiar with this idea of seduction. Well, you know, they're kind of put there just to make it easier for us. But the thing is, is we want to talk to people. We want to do the most human, most human thing, which is either to socialize or have sex. I don't know. I don't know. The most, the most human, the most, like, primal function, right? The most natural thing, the thing which we automatically do. You know, it's like human beings are one of those three mammals, which actually has sex to find a part of its culture. Um, and we want to make it into this, like, crazy, you know, fucking mathematical equation with 16 <coughs> variants. I forget what the M3 model has, but, like, it's an algorithm. With <laughs> anyway, <coughs> so we want to take that, we want to take it, but we also want to be natural. Now, being natural, look, TD is a fucking person who I have mad respect for. I would not be teaching if I did not meet TD a year and a half ago and have him talk and just see the resilience in his voice and all that. And it was funny because we were sitting in this cafe in Hawaii drinking kava, and, which is like a root which relaxes you or something. And uh, it's like a tea or whatever. I'm Look it up. Um, we're drinking it, and he's like, dude, guys, 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 check this out. No, you know, you know? <laughs> he's, he's like, no, so let me tell you, right? Um, <laughs> uh, he, just goes, he just goes on and on, and he's like, but look, the routines are just weird. They're weird. So, like, what about being yourself? And then, like, the next month, the marketing campaign for Natural Game came out. Let me tell you something about Natural Game. Natural Game is not like fucking going out and exploding, right? Like you just fucking eight rope a chick with your personality. Um, it is not. It is not that. Like the people that are naturally good with women are what? They're confident and dominant guys. They're guys that that we wanted to be. Guys who aren't afraid of expressing themselves. Guys who are, um, you know, guys who are not afraid of taking the right chances. 
and when they make the make them a mistake, you know, they own up to it. Those those are what like guys who are naturally good with with women do. You know, what's interesting is we did this interview yesterday, me, Anthony, and uh, Prosciutto. <coughs> anyway, we, we did this interview for this little internet, uh, you know, newscast thing, and they said, why is it why is it that uh, you know people are into this? And my answer to that is because there's a lack of a masculine definition in our culture. And there is. There's a lack of feminine definition in our culture. You know, what is defining us? You know, why was like a movie like Fight Club a popular movie? What is defining us? Fucking nothing. Nothing. We're up here and we don't know what to do. And so then we come here and we, we come to conventions like this, so we go out and we talk with each other, we go out to clubs, we go out and we meet people, because we're looking for that definition. Well look, what I want to teach you guys, what hopefully a lot of the instructors that are here can teach you guys, is how to do that better. Define a masculine and feminine role, because dude, we don't have it. That doesn't mean that we go and we like, you know, fuck up other people, we embarrass people. That doesn't mean that we need social pressure. That doesn't mean that we need all this shit. Look, like, it, it means that we need to go out and we need to learn how to understand people, number one, number one. Men and women are not that different. There's some differences, but in the whole biological realm, we're not that different. Um, but we need to understand people. We need to understand what we want, right? What we want as a man and, you know, what women may want. And women can want a whole bunch of things, just like you can want a whole bunch of things. It's, women are not sluts that go to a club that want to get fucked, you know. Some women may have that in the back of their mind, but even if they do have that in their mind, and that is their mission, if you only see them as that, you're going to sell yourself short. You're going to have a bunch of shitty-ass fucking SNLs that's worse than jerking off. And, dude, I'll fucking, I've had a ton of them, you know. The guy who came up with the whole, the term SNL is my friend. I hung out with him the other night, and I beat his ass time and time again in whatever competitions we used to have. Um, so anyway, uh, and, and he's good. I mean, he's the best, you know, quote unquote, Pua I know, if that means anything. So what I want to get to, I want to do a few things. Um, with that whole long-winded shit out of the way, let's, let's talk about uh, stuff that's relevant to you guys. And this is how I teach best, by interacting with you guys, and I'll tell you the little, like, complex systems and the tricks and all that shit that, uh, that I'm doing in order to make this stuff work. But what I want to know is who here thinks they have a pore? Um, you know, actually, who here thinks they, they may not be entitled to talk to women? All right, so you guys are all just going to fucking mob it when we get out of here, right? Right? All right, who here thinks that, uh, you know, has, has trouble approaching? That's the real question. Um, I already hit you up, even though you raised your hand first. So I'm, I'm going to hit you. Uh, what's your name? David. <coughs> David. David says. David. Yeah, so, okay. Sorry, I didn't say anything. I was just <laughs> expecting for you to say. No, so how long have you been in this? Uh, off and on, about two years. All right, so first off, what, what, like, what do you do? Like, when you approach and that sort of thing, what, what is it that you kind of uh, say or show? Uh, mostly it kind of depends on where I'm at and what I'm doing. So it's all the gamut. Daytime, nighttime, at the bathhouse. You mean like where or what do I say? What, what, like what is it that, what is it that defines your game in a nutshell? Are you a direct guy? Are you an opinion guy? Indirect, over the shoulder, high energy. A uh, fun guy. So if I'm having fun with it, then I'll... So what are some of the issues you run into being a fun guy? Um, meeting girls who don't give anything back. Uh, it's quick enough for me to kind of uh, take that energy and ride it. Okay. So if you guys don't mind, now, mind you, you are being recorded, and I am going to post all of your last names, occupations, cities that you live in on my website. Uh, and I'm, that's what this camera is for, is to take your picture as well. And I'll fucking find out who your goddamn parents are. I don't care. Um, so with that all being said, <clears throat> that all being said, if you tell me like some personal stuff about you, you know, as much as you're comfortable about, um, 
and I always share stuff about mine. What I want to do is, is say, hey, look, this is, a, this is a problem. You're, you've been in it like two years, right? You've been in it two years, and still you run into girls who don't give you enough back when you talk to them. Now, that should be like, that should be first and foremost one of the most important things. You would, you would ask like, you know, places you go, right? Or what, outside of a club. Well, look, uh, one of the best solutions for that is, is actually to work on the logistics. Go places you like. The best dating advice I ever heard was before I got into any of this, and boy, did I follow it. it. It's really simple. It's like, do what you love to do, and the right people will come in your life, right? Do what you love to do, the right people will come in your life. Sometimes you have to manifest that. You know, if you love to do things which are isolatory, you know, that may not help. You know, then you get like that one fucking bird that flies, and you gotta catch it. And you hope you're not like, uh, what's his name? Not Curly, the George from Mycin. No, not George. Who the fuck is the... No, George is the, the man in Mycin, then. The guy who kills the... Lenny. Lenny. Yeah, fuck it, Lenny. Jesus Christ. I was rooting for Curly in that book, man. No, but anyway, you want to, you want to bring the, the, the right people to you. So, where are the places that you go? Uh, usually I go to local, local bars and clubs. You live in, in Atlanta? Portland. Oh, Portland? Really? Whoa, fuck, man. That's a cool town. Shit, I love Portland. You know what's awesome? Here's a little tangent. Is all the pickup people hate Portland because it's like not club or whatever. Dude, fuck. Any traveler. It's, uh, dude, fucking Savage is the only... Like, I, you, Seriously, this guy like went around. I heard about him. He's like, my, my buddy, my buddy, we'll call him Shaft. You slept on his couch. <laughs> Years ago, he said, he's like, no, this guy, you got to read his blog. He's like, you, he takes pictures, he drives around, and he just, like, goes to concerts and fucks chicks, like, all over. I'm like, man, I, like, I thought everybody in the community was like, that would make sense. You know, it's like a manly thing to do, go around, adventure. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. Now, I want you to still hold the mic. Um, <coughs> sorry, sorry. So what, what are some things about yourself? W tell me one thing that you like and tell me one thing that you dislike. Um, I like that I'm a good writer. And uh, I don't like that I can't always fully express myself when I'm right. Writing. Great. Fuck the writer's dilemma. What kind of writing do you do? You do? Uh, screenwriting and short stories. Okay. What kind of movies do you like? Uh, science fiction. Science fiction. All right. All right. So, all right. So, check this out. What you want to do? What everybody wants to do in your first interaction with a girl? All right. We all have these openers, right? And it's true what they say. It's like direct opener. This is what you do for, and there's all sorts of reasons why to have a direct opener. I mean, I'm not really making, yeah, I am, uh, fun of it. But uh, there, then there's opinion openers, there's indirect openers. All right. The main thing is, is that we're going out and we're actually talking to people. We're talking to people that we are attracted to. We're not talking to people to work in a fucking thousand approaches. <laughs> somebody here might tell you something different, which is fine. You know, and by far, listen to them. We're not talking to somebody to to just have some throwaway conversation. We're talking to people to have a meaningful conversation because I'll tell you what, guys, once you get yourself on that autopilot, once you get yourself in a mode where you can express yourself and have you put you out there and they like it, that, that little mechanic, which I can, I'm, show, I'm gonna show you how to do right now and I'm gonna show more of you guys how to do, once you learn how to do that, it'll feel good, it'll feel normal, it will feel natural, it won't feel like, hey, hey, natural, which sometimes it is. If I did like a pound of blow in the bathroom, set up the chemistry set, it feels pretty natural to do that. <clears throat> but then, then you can't get an erection, you know, so fuck. If you do, you guys obviously haven't done, done enough cocaine to know that, but uh, all right. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so, but, <laughs> so uh, what you want to do is you want to present these things, right? So they're gonna they're gonna put you in a place where it's you. So there's a couple things, all right, in the techniques I have. The techniques number one is addressing a flaw, all right. You address a flaw and you reframe it, which we're gonna get to. But I'm gonna turn all this shit into an opener and and uh, have you go into a, some sort of grounding sequence, which isn't gonna work 100% of the time because we're humans. There's nothing mechanical about us, right? Uh, we're we're fucking we're fluid. You know, logic does not make sense for men or women. Just know that. Otherwise, we wouldn't work and do all the weird shit we do. Um, all right. So uh, we want to address a flaw. We want to get to that point, which is going to be that you don't know how to express yourself. Fuck. 
don't, a writer that doesn't know how to express himself. All I gotta say is, all you people who wanna read like whatever New Age books, read some Henry Miller, the writer that couldn't express himself, that fucking, that laid pipe all over Europe and had women write about it, um, that, are, that are famous books. Um, and you know, the thing is, is that's, that's actually an attractive quality, right? But it sucks because you feel it, and you feel it as an individual thing. Just like everybody has something out there. Like I actually, man, there's th stuff which is uncomfortable for me to bring up with, with people and I bring it up as much as possible, especially on stage and on camera. So it's out there on the internet so everybody can, when my Wikipedia page comes up. <laughs> Steve said he was molested by tigers, which is why his penis is turned into just a lump of, uh, um, uh, anyway. <laughs> so what we wanna do is let's turn this into an opener. All right, so I'm just gonna give, first off, if we go direct, you know, what, what is it? Direct, we gotta immediately transition to something. So if we go direct, we go, hey, I'm a writer, I wanna ask you something, I mean, fuck. What, what, are, we, what, are, we, what do we do for direct? But, but it could be something along those lines, but we wanna get into this rhythm where, where, we, uh, where we start to actually tell a story, which is building in, now this is ingenious. What's ingenious about the early pickup guys is they came up with this idea of push-pull, right? Swinging back and forth, you push them a little, you pull them back in. Every animal does it. They came up with some other things like bait. They came up with some things like compliance. Fuck, man, you get somebody to do things over and over again and they do that rather than the other option that they don't know about? Fuck. Now, it's amazing. They came up with things like qualification, right? Which qualification is awesome. This is so awesome. This is so great. We were, uh, uh, my buddies and I were at this strip club the other day and we met my friend Chris. This is a great story. There's a strip club in Dallas which has like a bunch of Playboy models working at it. And uh, uh, so we're there and uh, I, I, I met this guy like a couple months ago and he said, uh, he, goes, he, goes, he goes, man, I, I'm like, I wanna know everything about game. I suck at it, da 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 da. And I go, well, dude, everybody like knows you here. What the fuck? Oh, Jesus Christ. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, what? he's like, oh, well, I've only had girlfriends here. I'm like, how many girls have you like slept with here? He's like, well, 17. What? <laughs> you know, here's, here's an inside scoop here, guys. One of the better Puas in Dallas, or who was in Dallas, had sex with zero strippers the whole time he was there for two years. So, and tried to go to that club a lot of times. And what's even funny is this dude pays him money and uh, for his, one of his like online things. And I said, yeah, you should talk about how now you're at 21 uh, strippers, because he is, and I've known him for like two, three months. Uh, <laughs> you're at 21 strippers now. But he, he doesn't know anything about like cold approach stuff, but he was asking me about qualification. He goes, how do I qualify? Because I just qualified this girl and she got pissed. I'm like, look, dude, qualification is not for, uh, it is not so you piss somebody off. It's not really so you gain value, it's to see if you like them, right? And it's to guide the situation. It's to see if you have what it takes to talk to me, right? It's a valuable thing to say, but everybody turned it into value. Everybody turned it into, uh, you know, how we're gonna calibrate it for in comfort, right? It's, fuck, dude. Qualification's an awesome thing because it allows me to ask you questions that I pick the topic. I can ask you about my passions, or I can see, I can ask you about your passions, and I can talk about mine. I can ask you about what kind of movies you like, so I can talk about movies. I can ask you about some of the fears that you have so I can talk about my fears and make them look good. So what we're gonna do it, with you is we're gonna say, hey, you know, I got a question for you. This can be at nighttime, daytime. Tell me whatever variants or questions you have for it. Nighttime, daytime. Hey, I got a question for you. All right, look, it's really weird for me because sometimes I like miscommunicate in, in certain ways and I'm kinda like, whatever, whatever. I'm, I can't ask you this. I can't. All right, so that's bait. Bait 101. Any one of your answers, right? Especially if you're in like a low stimuli envir environment, which would be a restaurant, which would be a bar, which would be in the daytime, which would be at a bookstore, which would be at, you know, a kid's soccer practice when you don't have a kid, um, all those places, right? So you'd say like, hey, you know what? I got a question for you because like sometimes I misinterpret. Anyway, whatever. Forget it. I can't. I can't ask you this. You're too. You're too. You know something. But let's, let's put something in there which might work towards like a healthy frame. If you're somebody that's like too judgmental, you go and run your mouth, all right? So things like that, like keeping a secret, things like being open-minded, those are good, healthy things. I wanna talk to that part of that person, so I'm gonna put it out there right away, all right? If they don't have it, if they, if they say, well, I am judgmental, 
you know, then you kind of say, all right, well, I don't want to have this conversation with you, right? <laughs> so, or maybe you can torture yourself and push through, plow through, man, fucking get some hair on your chest. Um, so anyway, uh, I will, uh, you know, so let's, let's continue from there. So you're going to say, oh, whatever, man, I can't ask you this, all right? And then they're going to say, no, 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 tell me, tell me, all right? And then you're just going to go, you're, you're just going to say from there, well, look, you know, I'm somebody who's, like, I'm a writer, and it's kind of weird to talk about things. But I always get weirded out in situations like this. Like, I'm trying to figure it out. Are you somebody that is, and then we're going to say two components, right? Now, notice how I didn't stand the typical opener structure of saying, you know, the situation is this, and the situation facilitates this, and isn't the situation funny, or shouldn't you have an opinion about this situation? I'm going for them right away, because I want to talk to them. I don't want to fucking talk to their facade. I don't want to talk, I don't care if it's a club or whatever. You know, I don't want to talk to a part of them which I'm not going to be communicating with them because I enjoy talking to people, which is, you know, what all of your goals should be, right? I want to talk to them. So how it goes is, hey, you know what? I, I kind of like, I'm a writer and I think about things in kind of a different way. But in situations like this that make me feel uneasy, I'm wondering if you are this type of person or that type of person? Are you somebody that like, kind of like overthinks things or do you like, kind of like jump into things head first? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, don't tell me, or whatever, you know. Slap on whatever bait, charisma thing you want. But that's interesting, all right, so look. Look, it's real quick, real quick, especially if you're in like a bookstore. I don't, I don't like standing in the romance novel aisle because I'm obviously here to talk to women. <laughs> um, or to read these books and take them to the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> sneak them in the bathroom. Anyway, uh, but but it's that quick. Hey, hey, can I ask you something just because, oh, forget it, you're too busy. No, 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 okay, I, I'll ask you anyway. Like I'm like a writer and, and all this stuff, but I can do something which, you know, it's okay for me to ask this, right? I can do something which misinterprets people a little bit. And one of the things about that is uh, I get along with only a certain type. Like I bet you are... All right, you're, you're either one or the other, but I got to know, are you somebody that like, are you somebody that is like really kind of like free thinking and just off the cuff? Or are you somebody that kind of like, I don't know, do you tend to attract like the wrong people in your life? All right. Both are pretty, you know, which we can call cold reads, the highest level of manipulation um, and stealth tactics. Those are, those are some pretty common cold reads. Those are some pretty things... And when you're cold reading, I'm not saying, like, trick them. Fuck. It's better than a roofie. Because um, <laughs> it's not, really, let me tell you. <laughs> on, my, on my product page, I actually sell those. So, <clears throat> um, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, so, but anyway, but we're putting stuff out there. It's like, fuck, I want to talk to that part of that person. I want to talk to somebody that's open-minded. I want to talk to the part of them which, you know, attracts a certain type of bad person or whatever. The reason why I say I want to talk to the part that attracts a bad person is because I want to talk to the part of the person that makes decisions about who they like because that is a fucking core part. Because you know what? That's the same fucking part that you can't express. Right? And then you're on autopilot. And then it's like that fucking knot is untied. Right? That big knot of not knowing how to... to uh, you know, express yourself and not knowing how to be there is fucking untied, man. And you're walking on a path. You know what you just did there? You just put out a thread. You know, you put out a thread there of saying, look, I'm a writer. You know, I misinterpret things a little bit. Wait a minute, I'm nervous, so I can't ask you this because it's obviously important to me. That's the point. Well, that's one of the points of debate. And then you say, you say, but look, are you this type of person that I get along with or not? Because I hate having these conversations where, with people who I don't get along with. Right? Are you this type of person or that type of person? Because you know what? And then you can tell stories. You know what? It's weird. Like, I'm embarrassed to bring this up, man. I mean, like, fuck. Like, uh, a lot of people say they, like, write movies and brag about it, but I, I actually really hate it because I like to write f science fiction movies. And uh, <laughs> one thing about science fiction writers is they're the most, like, kind of demented people. Whatever, whatever. But it's in a good way. It's, like, it's truly the reason why... You know what's weird? And then check in and say, check in with them. Because remember, we're trying to align. We're putting stuff out there about us. 
And we're seeing what they like grab onto and ingratiate, and we're saying, hey, that hand that you just put out there and touched it, and touched it, I like that hand. Give it to me. Um, let me suck on those fingers. Which, <laughs> no, but anyway, so, <laughs> so, so, uh, so anyway, we're, we're gonna we're gonna try and stimulate that. We're gonna say, hey, you know what? But I can tell I can tell you like that because you're bringing this out of me. That's great. That's a great line. That's a great line to trick them. You're bringing this out of me. You know, you're bringing this side out of me. It's really awesome. I feel comfortable. And fuck, man, I've known you for a minute and a half. And shit, that's awesome. So then you're going to say, but you know what's weird about science fiction writers? We like all this weird, bizarre stuff. We do things like start Dianetics and fuck, and then like get all these people to drug us and live in Clearwater, Florida, and have me sign all these blank pieces of paper. Talk about L. Ron Hubbard if you don't know the history of amazing Scientology right now. <laughs> uh, over the head, over the head. Um, anyway, so <coughs> uh, you know, we come up with all these bizarre ideas, but it's really we come up with these bizarre ideas because we know humanity so well. And that's the thing. It's like I, I, I love talking to people, but at the same time I hate it. You know, and it, and it forces me to go inside and think things. But you're like that too. It forces me to think internally. It forces me to think like a woman. It forces me to think you know, about things which are important and deep inside me. Because you know what? As I bring those up, they're bringing them towards me. All right? And, uh, you know, basically, when I meet somebody I remotely like, I remotely like, in any way, I'm not thinking like, oh, fuck, dude, what, okay, what, dude, fucking Sean, Sean, what, what technique do I do here? You know, <laughs> I don't think that. You know, what I do is I just go, hey, no, man, I can't, I can't, uh, you know, fuck, I don't drink for these reasons, or shit, I had this relationship. Man, I have two kids that, you know, this was crazy with the ex, this stuff happened, blah, 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 blah. I bring that all up, because you know why? Because it's attractive. Fuck, dude, I didn't, I didn't graduate from high school. So what? I'm not trying to brag about it, I'm just telling you, I'm like, shit, dude, doesn't matter. My brother is one of the high, high, most high-educated people in the world. Now, mind you, he may be functioning a little bit better than me, you know. But, but, uh, <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, what does that matter? You know, in a capitalistic society, I, I do make more money than him. I, I travel around, I get to do a lot of the things that I want to do. That's fucking great. So why is it that I should be ashamed about bringing any of this shit up? All right, what of that do you have questions about? I like this. It's, it's hard for me to think right off the bat about, like, I guess if I put some time into it, like bad things that have happened to me or tough things. In my no, life. no, I'm just like, what questions do you have? Are you going like, man, I can't say that in a club. That's what I always get. But how could you say like tattoos on girls in a club? We all, we all swallow that one really easily, huh? Um, no, but what, what are some questions that you have? Like, uh, Steve, could you clarify this? What if, there, what if I can't find an upside to something negative about myself that I'm talking about? Dude, I'll tell you right now. Look, I have like massive, massive fucking like drug stories. I have massive stories of where like I got fucking lost everything. Dude, when I came here and spoke last year, dude, I had lost like everything. Like, like tons of stuff in my life. I was in this like major lawsuit and I was being slammed by the really alpha dudes in the community as being, uh, as being like, he's a thief. And he has these bad reviews, but we could only find one later to find out that was actually... Uh, you know, kind of, whatever, you know, melts a little bit. Um, you know, blah, 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 blah. Dude, there's tons of times when I've lost things, and I've felt bad about them. I've felt terrible about them. You know, there's times, like, I have relationships now, because I'm dumb enough to have multiple ones at one time, or whatever, you know? And, uh, and like, the things are not going good, but how is it that I project that to people? Dude, I tell every girl that I am attracted to, um, and a lot of times I have to force myself because it's a fear. You know how people talk about these social pressure exercises? Let's go and moonwalk around a group of people or sing like whatever song. That's all, that's great and all, you know. But you know what, life has real challenges that actually come up to you. Life has real things, like when I talk to a girl I'm afraid to bring up that I have like these other girlfriends that are really upset with me because of this stuff. So I tell them, I tell those girls. You know what's funny about that? Is they're actually interested. I'm not saying I'm using it as like some, oh, that sounded good. Or if I should wipe. <laughs> um, 
Guess so. <laughs> no, so anyway, uh, no, I, like I, I, I tell that to him because I'm afraid of it. Because you know what? The truth, in all honesty, <laughs> that was kind of funny. The, the truth is actually, you know, you only have to remember one story. Now, the key to it is, is you want to learn some methodology. All the shit that I can bank on. Now, there's a lot of good speakers. I don't mean to keep singling Fuji out. But he's going to talk about that shit. He's going to talk about it. What I'm saying is, look, take those mechanics. Take those mechanics. See, them, see what they're for. What we want to do is we want to translate those to our lives. You know, I didn't know how to, dude, I did do a stupid ass opener. I did tattoos on girls for fucking four months. You know why? Because at my boot camp they told me to, and I'm like that fucking, I don't know. I'm, it's so bad because then I started teaching boot camps, and they're like, wait a minute. You really did the opener for four, we just kind of say that. We don't think you're going to actually do it. Anyway, so, but I thought it was like a funny, funny fucking thing, right? Um, but in any case, whatever. It's, we, we, you can turn anything good, and it's your job, because I'll tell you something, too. And, like, look, I'm telling these stories, and I'm telling you these stories of, with women that I've had, like, really good relationships with, and even some of them might be brief. Some of them I may have only wanted to be brief. But, you know, I, I, I don't want you to misinterpret them of saying, like, dude, I fucking pounded this chick, which did happen. I pounded her inside. Don't get that one. No, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, I want you to actually realize that I, I, like, you know, basically when I did these things, I wasn't trying to fucking, like, trick them. I liked them. I liked them, was attracted to them. At the first moment, I opened this chick. I said, hey, I want to put a baby in you, and she laughed. And, uh, you know, the funny thing about this girl is, you, like, this guy, he commented to me, he's like, well, you only attract, like, club sluts with this sense of humor. This chick was in a daytime, for one. This chick's a computer programmer and makes, like, a lot of money. is really successful. Like, I mean, she's the most, she's very straight and narrow, actually, she describes herself as. But, you know, that's what I said. I said, I want to put a baby in you. Then I said, you know what? I'm just fucked up. I have all these issues. I talked to her for, like, an hour and a half, right? She, and uh, somebody, fuck, oh, man, jeez. You all get a discount for this? No, she didn't. No. But, uh, but anyway, I talked to her for a while, just telling the story about my life. She didn't say shit. And there was another girl there. And I was just saying, yeah, you know, this problem, this problem, that, fuck. When I was, like, all drunk one night, I fucking went to the strip club and slipped and fell in this, like, concoction of cum and piss and you know, <laughs> had to beg for somebody to buy me a shirt and, I'm just talking about all this stuff, essentially like bad stuff, but it was truly like a, a thing about my life, right? Stuff about my life. And I wasn't really joking about it, I was talking about it very seriously. And I told her I have like a bunch of women issues because of like, you know, this and that happening when I grew up and blah, 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 blah. And I seek out attention with females and yada, 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 yada. And as soon as the other girl left, she said, hey, you know what? I actually understand what you're talking about. And then she started telling me shit about herself. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, now I, now I do want to put a baby in this shit. I know what it's like when I fucking run my shit. No, but the thing is, I'm not really running shit. I'm talking about this stuff. And then I met her that day. We planned a trip. And then we had a week-long trip where we drove all around and shit. And, uh, but that's, that's how stuff goes. And, you know, that actually happens all the time for me. And it's really easy. It's like fucking cake easy. Like where I'll be sitting in a restaurant and a waitress will talk to me. I'll be sitting in a restaurant and I'll talk to somebody. Or, you know, I'll go to some bar or whatever. I'll go and do something that I like doing. And I'll see somebody that I'm attracted to. This is important, guys. Approach. Look, you want to approach, you want to practice, right? But how many times did you, what is it that you do for work? <coughs> so how many times did you have to work out, you know, or work with somebody? Actually, it's a better question. How many times was it that you actually had to train somebody and work with them to know what it was like he works at a gym. He works at a gym, everybody. Works at a gym. Works at a gym. Um, now, so how many times was it that you actually worked with somebody to know that you were good at it? I would say I just thought I was good at it. Right. Even better. So why is it that we have to do a thousand fucking approaches? You know why? You know? Right. See, I'm yelling here. I'm fucking fired up. All right. Fuck. Uh, I'm waiting for that fucking beat off of Dream in the bathroom later. No, but, uh. <laughs> no, but you knew you were good at it. Fuck. 
dude, what if you could go and talk to women and you knew you were good at it? What if you could go and talk to women and you could be your fucking self? Right? Because that's what being a man is, right? It's not being afraid to be those things. What if you could do that? That's easy. You need to do it like maybe 10 times, right? 10 times of practice and to know what it feels like, to know what it feels like to be afraid and say, hey, to know what it, to know like the difference of like, hey, we're coming in at this angle or, or how close we're standing and all this crazy shit. That's, that's all you need. You need, to, you need to recognize those things. Maybe you need to do it fucking 20 times. But dude, you don't need to kill yourself doing that. You can do that in a week. You can do that in two weeks if you want to take your time with it. But that's what you should be doing. And the quickest you can get to a point of confidence where you can project that and actually tell somebody, look, this is how you work out. If you want to take care of yourself, if you want to do blah, 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 blah. Here's what I did. Here's what my other clients did. Here's what whatever. You know, here's what my experience is. Here's what I've seen other people I look up to do. You know, that's what it should be. Hey, look, you know what? I'm attracted to you. I'm attracted to you so much to the point that I have to talk to you. That's who I talk to, right? The other day we were talking to we were talking to a couple girls, and I I fucking hate this. I mean, look, I'm I'm telling you guys, be like me, man. Come on. No, but but in reality, I'll get caught in the mode. You know why? Because I hung out with all these guys who were like gaming all the time, and it's just fucking annoying. Like this unnatural, like, hey, yeah, oh yeah, you're doing that, really? You must be. They always do. They always do the. You must be. Like, Jesus Christ, man, really? <laughs> no, but anyway, so, but the thing is, is I'll catch myself doing it. You know, I'll press too hard. Like one of my, one of my best friends, and one of my best friends who uh, we'll, call, we'll call Dave, he always says like, Steve, why are you always like pressing so hard with these people? You can see him again. You know, you can see him again. It's not like he's saying, look, abundance. But essentially, that's what he is saying. It's like, fuck, you can see people again. You can have an experience again. If you're going to have a relationship with somebody, that cultivates and grows. You know, fuck, man, let it go. You have a shitty night, you have a shitty night. You have a good night, you have a good night. Whatever. It shouldn't define you. What should define you are the things that you love about yourself. For you writing, for you, uh, I suppose, working with people in, in, in the gym and that sort of things. Those are, those are great things. You know what I like to do? I like to travel. I like to play music. I like to do photography. I like to work with people. I like talking to women a lot. I love talking to women. You know what's weird is everybody else, just like how I told you I gave layer talks all the time, is everybody thought it was weird that I talked to women. Now, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just save this for Savage's speech, but you can tell he's talked to women and talked what makes them attracted. It wasn't like, at what point? At what point did you know you liked me? It was more like what I get from him and what I like to know is like, what really made you like me? Because I liked you at this point. Like, re- like seriously. And I talked to them about this, that like I got turned on when we'd have this conversation and I had to fucking talk to you. And they'd say, well, maybe not, you know. And it was always a little bit more down the road. And I'm like, well, well why did I sense that with you? And blah, blah, blah. But I learned so much. All the stuff I know about like game really comes from talking to women. It's not debriefing them. It's actually getting to know them. And what makes them sexually attractive? What makes them sexually turned on? Because they are more so. All right, let's move along. Let's move along in terms of uh, more routine stuff because everybody loves that stuff. Who here is having a problem that, they're, that they want to bring up? Nobody. You're all perfect. Come on, guys. I do this really good. Hey, where's that piece of paper? It's in the back. The reason for that is, is we're going to do a little, little trick with that piece of paper in a few minutes um, as soon as I have it in my hands. But who here has something... Who here has something that, that they want help with? Nobody? Fucking, I already talked to Craig enough. Jesus Christ. Seriously, guys, this is, this is retarded. All right, I'm going to go with, with you. You raised your hand first. Again, I'll ask you, what is something that you're really proud of about yourself that you find is defining towards you? No, you in general. Well, let's get the microphone to this guy. He's pretty driven. All right, driven towards what? Your goals. And what are some of those goals? What's the short-term goal?
Okay, cool. Cool, so check this out. If you could talk about those things, it would be easy for you to talk about, right? But they're always like, don't talk about marketing. They won't understand it. Hey, your job is to make people understand it. Your job is to make everybody understand. That's what you do as a marketer, right? You know, so, <clears throat> so what you want to do is like you can be flirty. What would be, just a, I know I'm putting you on this, but what would be a quick example of a flirtatious uh, interaction that you have? out like uh, I'm in a certain mood and like I know it, that mood equals me like flirty and playful I don't know how to okay. it's just it's kind of like a feeling and I know the days that I feel that I know the days that I know I'm gonna do like good when I go talk to girls um, just because of how I feel and then I know the days that I feel like I'm gonna have a shitty night just because I guess maybe the energy levels type of thing okay cool 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 all right so in terms of in terms of that, you're going out at nighttime, I assume. No, I actually haven't been gaming in a while. It's just... Okay. Um, so yeah. a lot of it actually might be feeling that you don't feel like you have a place in it, too. Right? Well, no, I, I just have... I've been very busy because uh, I just started this job. Sure, sure, and, sure. Um, so, but, dude, why don't you say that? I mean, why don't you say that? Why don't we put that into, like, some sort of opener so you can talk about that right away and then define it to them? Because in every story, guys... All right, it's time where we got to write stuff down. we got to write stuff down. In every story, there's a beginning, middle, and end, right? This was the, this was the ingenious thing that, that Future had told me. <laughs> the ingenious PUA technique of beginning, middle, and end. What I always say is there's a thesis, there's your content, and there's your definition. Every interaction, no matter if it's an opener, no matter if it's uh, you know, this long, fucking you know, gigantic story, that, it, it, that you want to have that. You want to have a definition at the end based on your experience, your content, all this stuff, all right? So, check it out. What you want to do is you want to somehow state, hey, look, I somehow like you. I just started this job. This and that's happening. It's a marketing job. That makes you and me click, all right? So how do we do that? And you can do it for anything. So it's pretty... If you're a little bit creative, you can figure out you know, how to do these things. And this is what I would encourage all of you guys to start opening with. Say, hey, 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 let me ask you something. You know, and then you can add that bait or not of saying, oh, you know what, I can't ask you this. But you can say, hey, you know, can I ask you something? It's actually an important question. I bet you're somebody that, that actually thinks a little bit different. And here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove it. Like I started this marketing job, right? That's all I've been doing. So I'm in like work mode and you're in like social mode. But I actually think it's harder for women to get in social mode than guys, right? And they're going to say no. <laughs> they say, what the fuck are you talking about? Or they're going to agree with you in some, some facet, right? They're going to think blah, 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 blah. Either way, they're going to react. They'll very much react to, to a question like that because it, it's like, hey, make a decision. You know? the, the stuff about you having a job and those things, that's just, that's just makes, that just makes it easier for you to talk about stuff. It's not like really adding value or, you know, the normal mystique of those things. Uh, it kind of does. But, you know, oh, man, I've been working a lot. I want to ask you this question. I bet you think different, all right? So I'm setting my expectation of what I'm, you know, this actual real conversation I'm having with you. It's not like, you know, some half-assed thing. It's a real conversation. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to say, but you know what? I bet... I bet that you're somebody that totally, and then I'm gonna hit some sort of like, some part of them that I enjoy talking to them about. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a quality I'm gonna assume about you and I'm gonna put it into this routine to project it, right? So I'm gonna say, I love hearing that click. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say for you, you. I'm gonna say that you wanna be somebody that uh, they want to get you in your natural state, your natural habitat state. I'm going to say that for somebody like you, it's uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to say for somebody somebody like you, you're going to be interested in somebody that's really driven as well, somebody that is really driven and very uh, very ambitious, and that's who you want to talk to. You don't want to talk to somebody who's you know some damsel in distress, or maybe you do, you know, and then you can say, hey, I bet you're somebody that's really unstable and fucks up every time. Probably have like two kids from different dads. Now, um, <laughs> that could be a cold read, right? If you get that one right, they'll be like, yes, how'd you know? Fuck, you want a third? Fuck, I'll call ten of my friends over and give you even more than that. Uh, <laughs> no, so anyway, so, but, but what you want to say to them is you want to tell them that 
you're, uh, you, you want to force some sort of frame. So you're saying, hey, you know what? I, I wanted to ask you something. I think you think a little bit different, but like I started this marketing job. And for, you know, there's this thing. I think you're not like this, but most women, like, look, I'm in work mode and I'm thinking that thing, but that's normally like how most women think. But you think maybe a little bit more in a social mode or something. Or, and so they'll say yes, no, maybe so, right? Like, oh, fuck, man. I knew you'd say that or something. It's like, oh, fuck. You know, I'm like, I'm glad you answered, whatever, you know? But somehow, whatever their reaction is, you're then going to say, you know what? What's awesome about you is, is uh, I can tell you're a really driven person because most people get nervous when they at, at, you know, are asked a question like that. You know, and you actually knew it. Like, I bet if I asked you, I bet if I asked you, like, right now, right now, what is it that you really want to do? I bet you'd know. Because if you asked me that, it would be awesome. Right? And then you'd have to go back with some, like, ooh, you know, attraction type of stuff. But for the most part, you're setting a fucking stage, man. You're laying it out for them to have an easy conversation where you can say, look, this is what I like. This is what I'm attracted to. Are you going to be it? You don't have to. If you are, let's keep talking. Because in reality, that's all that there can be. And I'll tell you what, that works really fucking good. That works really good then. You're very tall. You're very short. My mom never told me to date tall people because blah, 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 blah. So uh, that works a lot better than that shit. It works really quick. But in order to get the mechanics of that stuff, those things are really good. So what was that? It's beginning, middle, and end. Thesis. This is about me talking to you right now. All right, here's the content. I just started this job where this thing happened. I have this opinion about something. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. Give me an answer. You gave me an answer. You gave me something. You remember that whole idea of A2? You gave me something. Hey, I'm going to tell you what that means. And then we're going to have a conversation like that or not. All right? What's even better is we can do that with sexuality, too. All right. What is something else? You had your hand raised, sir. Talk to me. Oh, wait. Wait for the microphone. Wait for the microphone. Oh, shit. What the fuck happened? Did this paper, like, disappear or something? Oh, yeah. Touch it. Rub your scent on it. Rub your scent on it. Oh, go ahead. What? Uh, well, one of my main problems is isn't really creating opportunities or anything, but it's simply capitalizing on it or just making a move. Awesome. I know exactly what to do, but for some reason I feel a little anxious about it. And you know, I I want to talk more. I want, uh, but I'm just going to say this. It's actually a really, really, really important question because the thing is, is, yeah, we know what to do. We know what to do, but it's hard to execute it. That's important. That's why I'm saying. As much as possible, get yourself on like kind of like an autopilot with all this, where you can actually project, you know, parts parts of yourself which will naturally, you know, come out. But what points do you really notice this happen? Um, approaching and I guess like making the first kiss or something like that. Okay. Those are the two what things. what is it that you? You know, this is kind of like food for thought, or maybe like on Sunday when we're all beaten and tired, and you know, as funny as last year. Last year, all the instructors did the circle of boy to all the girls that they berated and thought was funny because they hadn't like hung out with each other in a while. Well, they ignored everybody here, and which was pretty amazing, I thought. And then, uh, then uh, anyway, all the students like were like, "Dude, I fucked this! Like, fuck, dude, I was in the elevator, and you know, it's like I had a threesome, and like these things happened. Like, we witnessed them happening, and I don't know if the instructors had the same privilege." But, but, I mean, the instructors get laid, obviously. I just thought it was a weird dynamic. So, uh, sun, Sunday, when we do our Q&A, that, like, in, uh, more speakers have spoken. Maybe we can reference them, because there's a lot of directions that I could go with that. Um, uh, but, yeah, it'll be a good time. Anyway, I think, uh, why is it, what is it that you want out of these situations with, with women? Do you want to, like, hook up with them that night? Do you want to, you know, get to know them? Do you want dates? Shit like that? Talk to me. Either like between a hookup, like just an SNL, or um, a meaningful relationship, but it's one of those two. Right, right, right. So what we want to do, and Adonis will probably talk about this, but this is a very common idea, is that we want to go for screening. You know, you want to find out what girl you're talking to right away. And part of that is your motivation. Remember, as men, as men, we want to be leaders, right? We want to be dominant. We want to do all this, all this stuff. We want to... Uh, you know, we want to set the tone, right? And so what we want to do is if those are your motives, which is a pretty broad scape, it's like, hey, I want everything from these girls. 
Are they going to have sex with me that night? Are we going to hook up? Or are, are we going to have a relationship? But we want to know that right away. So how do we do that? We're going to find out what type of girl they are. So we want to have qualifiers that allow us to, we want information from them, right? So we want qualifiers to say, like, hey, what are you passionate about? You know, what do you enjoy? Or what are things that you would value in a relationship? You know, so you ask those questions. If they don't answer them, then you know they're probably not people you're going to talk to much, and you may just want to have an experience. Maybe you want to, uh, there's nothing wrong, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having sex with somebody, you know, that night or whatever. But I'll tell you this, the more you do that, the more you're going to press yourself, and it's going to bring out all sorts of awesome insecurities about you, which you're going to, which you're going to have to work on, which is, which is actually a good thing. But there's nothing wrong with having sex with somebody the same night. You know, there's plenty of women that want that too. Not all women. I mean, you can't assume that all women. But some girls might like that. The whole essence of what CJ was saying with the SNL was you're setting them free. You're putting out frames to set them free. So you want to you wanna put those out next. So you say like, hey, you know what, let me ask you. Let me, I know we just met, but you seem pretty cool. You wear your hair in a bun and have like too much eye makeup on. I bet you're a pretty passionate person. You know, but I would bring that up really quick really quick. And they may not be able to answer it. They probably won't be able to answer it. And that's fine. And then you say, what is it that you do for work? You. Um, I'm, I don't have a job right now. I'm about to just start community college. Okay, so you say, look, I'm, I'm a student. I'm in transition with a lot of stuff right now. I don't know what I'm doing, but I know like, I really enjoy my friends and I enjoy like, going out and having a good time. I mean, that's a good way to, say, to define your passion. So you say, what are you passionate about? They're kind of like, well, I mean, I hang out. And they're like, no, no, no. Like, look, for myself, you know, I'm in school and I have like these goals focused on this and that. You define it, right? I have these goals focused in these ways and, and uh, man, I don't know, I see myself going in a, in a good direction, but like what, what really is it that drives you? They can't answer it or they don't want to answer it, then you start, you switch to that more like SNL hookup mode. And I would actually go a little bit more aggressive with it. I mean, not to, I could tell you how to get really aggressive with it, but. <laughs> Then I would, I would do things like standing a little bit closer. I would do things like, uh, uh, <laughs> I would do things like standing a little bit closer and start saying things like, oh man, I bet you're somebody that like, just likes to have fun, man, that like, thinks on your feet. You know, you're spontaneous. You're just somebody that, that knows what you want right away and goes for it. Am I right? Am I right? And there's all sorts of like touching shit you can do with that. What I would say in terms of things like, I don't know where to go with it, is I'll tell you this. A long time ago, I was told, a long time ago, I was told, set these frames down, and then you just let it, so you sit back. And that's, that's not entirely true, but it's pretty goddamn true. You set the situation out, and it'll take care of itself, right? You don't have to have unprotected sex a bunch of times, you know, to get chlamydia. It just happens. It just kind of, um, so anyway, you, you want to do that. But all you would have to do is if you went into that mode, one, relationship mode or, you know, I really want to get to know this person better mode for the most part. All you would have to do is you'd have to start talking about yourself and the things that you value in a push-pull way, qualifying them, gaining compliance. You know, I know that sounds really complex, but it's, it's a fucking simple thing. It's just we want to learn those techniques and embed them in there, right? You know, to make it easy for it to happen. If you wanted an SNL to happen, if you wanted sexuality to happen, those things need to be brought up. They can be brought up by topic. Now, I bet you everybody's in this is going to talk like they know about it, but when Savage speaks, listen, listen to what he's saying. You can talk about it by topic. You can do it by body language. You can do it by how you're interacting, like your timing and pacing and shit like that. You know, even timing of moving them. And you can do it by logistics. You can do it by being a little bit dominant. And there's all sorts of ways you can communicate sexuality. But that's what needs to start happening more. There needs to be compliance towards that if you do want to hook up with them. Now, things like making out in a club, you also have to realize, like, we're social creatures. Do you like to be embarrassed in front of a bunch of people? You know, uh, you know, I don't. And so a woman, to feel comfortably sexually, just like a guy, we're all like, yeah, no, we can, we can do it anywhere. <laughs> Which we all know is not the case. But, uh, or maybe we don't. <laughs> but I don't want to try and prove that right now, because I might get fucking hit with a bunch of white pellets. But, uh... But, uh, but anyway, <laughs> my friend in the back was like, yeah, we do. Yes. <laughs> I bet he could fucking gun it from here, too. No. 
<coughs> sniper style. Fuck, so take out like five flies on the way. Um, anyway, so what we want to do is we want to make it easy for them to sexually communicate. Doing things like publicly making out and stuff like that usually diminishes that. It makes them feel, you know, they said there's the anti-slut defense. Well, it actually, it's actually true. You know, women, you know, if they're making out in public with a guy they just met, it's going to make them second guess a lot of things. You want to, you want to make them feel comfortable, and then like in the, in the, the alleyway or dumpster, um, <laughs> in the back seat of the taxi cab with another passenger you're sharing the ride with. That's where to make them. No, but you want your move to be made in the right places, right? Um, let's. Any questions with that? Um, just one. Um, I asked someone else about this, and they about the anxiety. Like you're a little bit nervous because you're starting just beginning about this. Right. If you do it enough times, it'll just diminish, right? Fuck no. Jesus Christ. <laughs> How many of you guys, dude? Look, I haven't done all the fucking yoga moves and tapping shit. I haven't done the Sedona method and all that stuff. I've done a lot of interesting stuff. Approach anxiety, yeah, sometimes I'll be in state. Sometimes I'll be all down for it. And you know what, it helps, the, the best advice for approach anxiety, actually the best advice is actually this, do what you like to do. Do what you love to do and, and, and make the situation so it's a social situation. But the best like technical poo advice is, is you gotta just approach like two or three sets and talk to people. And at, logistically I would solve that by showing up to a place early. You know, like, uh, you're under 21? Yeah. yeah, so I would show up to places before they get started. If you're over 21, you know, like 8 o'clock, you know, 8, 10.30 is when the club's fucking personality takes over, right? Even if it's a bar, it's like, you know, it gets a little bit more, like, powerful. I'd show up early and talk to people, you know? But don't take it too seriously. Remember, we're doing something natural. We don't want to be too abnormal and have that, you know, write our scripts for pickup. You know, so approach anxiety will not diminish. That's what people say, you know, but fuck, dude. I get it, but you know when I get it? Here's another actually interesting thing, right? Everybody always says San Francisco's a shitty city to game in. I don't know why, I don't know. I, actually, Fuji, I don't think you said that, but everybody used to always say that, right? It sucks, but it sucks to teach in a big group. That's why it sucks, because there's like no big clubs, right? There's only these smaller bars. It's great, it's great. Eric will tell you that the mission is the armpit of the world, and uh, uh, the tenderloin is only where ethnics hang out, or whatever she said. I personally love those places. Uh, <laughs> she's like, he's like daggers coming here. You fucking asshole. She, you know, the, I guess all the open-minded, free-thinking New Age people hang out in the marina, where they all talk about how much money they make. No, but anyway, there's, there's good places. There's great places in San Francisco. What, literally, this is literally the truth. And I, I'm not meaning to be too mean to her. I'm just joking. But uh, anyway, the things, the things about uh, San Francisco were that I had like no approach anxiety because like I'm all into all this artsy shit, and whatever, that I would literally see like three times a day some of the most attractive people, like, you know, I don't know. I don't know anything about their personality, but I was just like, oh my God, that's the hottest chick I've ever seen. I just go, hey. Hey, what's up? I'm, I'm Steve. Uh, you know, it's like the most like AFC thing. And then you know, I'd go somewhere where it was so easy because I was in my element, right? And you know, that's my life. And not everybody may have those things, but like in a club, that's not my element. You know, I'm not. That's not my thing, dude. You know, and that's where I'd get approach anxiety. That's where I'd start to feel afraid. You know, the moment I started pressuring myself. You know, the the thing is, is we want to get to a level where we can easily, easily talk to people. Um, you know, right away, right away, you know, in that mode, autopilot, just sitting back, we got the frame set, and it all comes to you, it all comes to you. Um, anyway, uh, you had a question. You in the blue. We'll wait for the microphone. <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, I have like an attraction to comfort transition question for you. I, I feel that my attraction game is, uh, you know, it's pretty much as watertight as a frog's ass. But I, I was just curious how, like, you personally, you know, when you're out, how do you, like, transition from the attraction? Like, how do you how do you go from being a clown to, you know, you should put me inside you, you know? On the, <laughs> can you tell us about that? <coughs> you asshole. You asshole. The gas is going to be extra bad later. No, anyway, so... 
So uh, you're going to have to plug it up with something, man. That was a serious question. I know it's a serious question. Um, but first off, first off, I, the, the, between the attraction phase, so kind of what's happening, and since you still have the mic, you could probably tell me if I'm wrong, is how do we switch from going like really bold, really these attractive qualities, these qualities which are going to pay, make people immediately pay attention to us, right? These bold things, which could be having a lot of energy, it could be just being louder, it could be like having crazy hair, it could be, you know, not showering for a couple days, whatever. But what people are really going to notice us right away. You know, what is it? What is it that is going to take attention? And then how do we how do we take that down and talk about ourselves? Or how do we take that down and talk about some really deep stuff that's also sexual? Huh? Eh, eh, a little bit. Tell me. Tell me how. All right. Well, you hire me. No. So check it out. This, this is a good question. Everybody, look, look. The thing is, is I've always liked sex. I've always been curious about it. I've always uh, been really... I don't want to say I've been comfortable with it. In fact, I, how, are, how are we doing on time? Uh, doing really good. Let's find out exactly. Ten minutes? All right, so I gotta, I gotta take the, I gotta fucking. Well, 15, 15. 15, 15. All right. So, uh, but how do we do that? We wrap all those things in. Look, we are people who are, are you know, one, sexual beings. We're social beings. Those are, those are the two pretty hardwired things, right? You know, all these other unique characteristics are really factors of that. How we socialize and how we're sexually attracted to people. It's the age old question, man. Lack of masculinity, lack of femininity in our culture. So we gotta start defining those things. It's a great open, you know, open thread for us to trick people into, right? Open that door and make them fall in and then it's like Hannibal Lecter, or not Hannibal, Buffalo Bill. <laughs> it rubs the lotion. Um, <coughs> uh, so, <laughs> This is actually, this is a good social pressure exercise to do that. Um, but and tuck your penis in between your legs, which it actually happens, right? That's what I did to overcome my stage fright. Um, no, but anyway, to, to, uh, to put that in as one, our opener needs to ground ourselves. It needs to have a ground, you know? It needs to have something which talks about ourselves. When we talk about something, we need to project like, look, I'm going to talk to you. I want to talk to the real you, too. I want to talk to a characteristic about your emotions, your decision making, what makes you actually tick, right? What makes you actually, you know, be sexual, essentially. What makes you attracted to somebody? That's what I want, all right? I want to be talking to that immediately, as soon as possible. So how do I do that? When I open, I talk about myself. I ground. I say, hey, look, you know, my, my name is Steve. You know, I do all this crazy shit. I didn't mean to embarrass you, whatever. I can over, overdo things. You know, I was the youngest child, whatever. I want to talk about These are all normal things I can talk about. Now, I dictate the conversation. I'm always asking questions, and I'm always in some ways challenging them. You know, hey, look, are we going to have this conversation or not? Now, the thing is, what's interesting is I make each and every single one of, each and every single one of those, those things that, that they, you know, are, are compliant with me of saying, like, oh, man, that's interesting. You have a, a hobby with animals, and you know, you've actually palpitated a cow. And I say, yeah, you know, it's really crazy. But you know, what, you know why you'd actually like that. And that's how I start to work in types of sexuality. I start to build a sexual definition with them, right? And I'll start to actually say, like, no, it's actually, uh, it's actually interesting that you would be, you'd be like into that topic. Like, it really shows like an open-minded part of themselves or a part of you that actually, uh, that's really amazing. You're somebody that I would really get along with. But you know what? Now let's go with some positive stereotypes towards women. You know, women like to be sexual. You know, women love to be sexual. They don't like to be sluts or whores. Maybe some, but, you know, whatever. They like to actually be empowered sexually. Who doesn't like Cleopatra? Who doesn't like, you know, and I heard this, I have to give him credit, but Savage, he's going to speak, but he said this at the speech uh, a couple Fridays ago, and he said, you know, women invented seduction. Men want sex. Women invented that dance, so fucking let them have it. Let them, you know, let them do it. They invented that. You know, they invented those stereotypes. And so put those out there right away. I would put them out there as soon as I could. Now, they won't always take, take hold. But no, man, you, you, like, really get off on tempting people. I bet you attract people that might be really weird. You might, might attract people that are really good. You attract people, like, one of your favorite things is seeing how much... Like, you can embarrass men, you know, because you, you're really, really a sensual person, I can tell. Like, don't get embarrassed by it. It's awesome. 
These are all great things. I mean, when I talk to a girl that I like, now one, if I sense that from them, that's easy. But two, I want to talk to that. It doesn't mean I'm like gonna go screw them and fucking like you know make them have threesomes with me and then raise my kids and all this shit. But you know, for some it does. But uh, what it means is I want to know that part of them. You know, I want to know that part. <laughs> So, hey, there's a lady back there laughing. Anyway, guys, I wanna I wanna actually uh, since we're short on time, I, I usually like to give like lots and lots of content. There's a couple things. I'm doing a layer talk at 8 p.m. here, uh, somewhere outside. Anyway, I'll be hanging around doing a layer talk for the top layer. So come to it. The top layer I've ta spoke to a bunch of times. They're not used to all this fucking you know hey guys da -da 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 stuff. But a lot of you guys don't know me, and I, I want that to happen. So there's going to be a lot of like technique stuff given there. All right. So it's at 8 p.m. It's right after. It's right after the last person speaks here, which you should come and watch all the speakers. It's a great thing. I mean, that's what you paid for. You're all welcome. Welcome to come. It's free. Now, also, where's that? Where's that thing? We're gonna dance now. Hey, hey guys, hey. No, please. Hey, what about tattoos on your? All right. So see that? See that? Routines work, guys. Fuck, man. I didn't even get through it, and he fucking melted. Um. <laughs> his fucking seats probably all went with semen in between his ass crack. Um, so, so anyway, check this out. I have this. I have this. Oh, look at the people who are afraid to write their phone numbers. Check this out. What's going to happen is, you know that little video I did? I recorded it in the beginning, remember? And I said, hey, guys, embarrass yourself. Say, I know all your mom's names and all that shit. There's, there's a little, I was actually going to say it, but I'm mic'd up. So much to the point that they can hear me drink water. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm, on that video, I'm going to put it up on YouTube. I'm going to email all of you guys, right? And on that, on that email, there's going to be some instructions. There's going to be a little code word. And what I want you to do is, you're going to give me that. Now I'm going to email it like in the next couple hours, right? Next like three hours. So if you can check it, check it. If you can't, call your friend who did check it and say, hey, look, da 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 da. There's going to be something in there for you to do which may even be texting me and then emailing me that, that password number. I, what I'm going to do is for the next two days, for Friday and Saturday, now I know you guys are having an approach-a-thon, and I can't take everybody, but based on the texts that I get who text me, I'm going to pick 10 people per night. That's a lot, all right? That's a lot. And I'm going to basically tell you my schedule, where I'm going to be at, all right? Now, where I'm going to be at and from like 9 to 11. We don't want to go too crazy. And we're going to do a lot of the things that I'm talking about, all right? So make sure you're on that, all the people who didn't fucking miss work. To come here on a Thursday, they're all fucking missing out. Pansies. No, anyway, so that's what that is. But, so check it out. A lot of you guys saw the little video thing, text me back the whatever stuff and all that fun, nice stuff. I have like 25 people, so I'm going to start texting you guys back as soon as I get off stage and all that fun stuff. But there were a few emails which were bunk. So I'm gonna go over them like really, 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 really super quick. Uh, so I am Pulse, no good. Uh, Jesus Christ, it's gonna take so long. There's like C, yogurt, whatever. Anyway, if you didn't get an email, talk to me. Otherwise, it's just gonna be too, too uh, embarrassing and humiliating. As uh, are these anybody's to to go over them on stage? Anyway. But what I wanted to do is they, I guess they had had some technical difficulties and they said, hey, can you redo the, the last part? But what's so interesting about this is actually on my break, when I, when we, when we uh, went for lunch, a uh, few guys actually came up to me and they talked to me and they said, hey, look, you know, uh, could you talk more about this stuff? Could you actually, like, what's going on? Have you ever been in a place where you've actually felt, you know, like you, you, you felt less than? Where you felt as if you didn't have anything or where you felt you, you completely, you know, hated yourself and all these, all these types of things. And so I thought, I thought dude, I, I can feel that every day. And that was kind of one of the points of why I was bringing up some of those things. Is look, we all came into this for some of the same reasons. We all came into this to, to get better at expressing and be better as, as, uh, you know, as men, essentially. And uh, actually, it's, it's so interesting because even in this time, Savage and I were talking about stuff as, uh, as what the definition of that is and how it came about. But like I was saying, guys, is look, I've been in so many different places, uh, you know, where, where you guys have been, and just how I entered here, and just how I even entered even sexuality in general, was in, in losing my virginity, I was, I was hit with that super, super hard ball of, a, of, a, of my girlfriend actually getting kidnapped and all that, all that crazy stuff, 
And that just made me psychologically get sent into a whirlwind, which made me afraid in every single way. And guys, one of the things is when we act upon our fears, when we act upon things which are, when we're motivated by things like guilt or shame or, or anger or even competition in that sense, and we have such an ego-driven uh, you know, kind of goal and our leaders are so e ego-driven as well, you know, we, we kind of miss the mark. And so one of the things is tonight, for the guys who are going to come out with me tonight, for the guys who are going to, I'm actually doing a, a layer talk right down the hall with the top layer. If you guys want to meet some of the Tampa Orlando guys, there's a bunch of my former students there who are like really, really good. Um, definitely come to it. We'll talk about some techniques and all that shit and tactics, and it's a little bit more content dense. But look, we're all starting from the same place. There's, like I said, you know, just when I first, you know, started buying stuff, or when we were talking about that David D. E. book going, man, I invested in this thing, and it's like, shit, is it going to work or not? Dude, let's get started tonight, and let's, uh, let's get started the next couple days. We have the Approach-a-thon happening. If you're not coming to the Layer Talk, if I do text you guys back, which I will in the, in the next few minutes, we will be, uh, you know, we'll be having an awesome time tonight. We'll have dinner. We'll talk. We'll get, we'll get intimate. <laughs> and, and we'll talk about a lot of personal stuff and a lot of stuff about change because that's what it is. As soon as, soon as I step off this stage, you guys fucking follow me out the door and we'll walk together, all right? <laughs> Excitement! Come on! What the Woo! fuck? All right. Woo! Thanks guys. We'll all have a blast tomorrow, too. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Awesome. All right, guys, I'll see you in the morning. Let's do it.